Is workplace safety training a big pain in the neck for you? Is it a big waste of your time? Not another safety meeting. Aren't there a lot more important things that need to get done at work today? I mean, really, what are the chances that I could be injured or killed at work? Well, what are those chances? In the United States, the latest figures from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics show that an average of 85 workers in the U.S. are killed every week. That's about 12 a day. This means that for every 100,000 workers, slightly more than three will die this year in a work-related fatality. The same statistics show that more than 4 million workers suffer a serious job-related injury or illness every year. Therefore, for every 100 workers, more than 3 will get seriously injured or ill on the job this year. They will suffer and their families will suffer the physical, financial, and emotional hardship that come along with injuries and illness. What are your odds of getting killed at work? In the United States, slightly more than 3 workers out of every 100,000 will get killed this year. Your odds of getting seriously ill or injured are much greater, more than three out of every 100 workers. These are not the type of lotteries you want to win. Since 1970, death and injury rates in the U.S. have fallen by almost 70 percent. What happened? In the late 60s, industry, worker groups, and government made safety an important goal, so laws, training, and hazard awareness were brought to the forefront. Workers like going home safe every day, and companies want losses to drop sharply, and this was being achieved as more attention was paid to develop developing formal safety programs. Safety was being taken very seriously, and businesses discovered the advantages of developing a safety culture. It could be called safety's tipping point, where everyone discovered that needless injuries and deaths could be dramatically reduced with just a few regular meetings. The feedback and ideas generated in these meetings helped safety leaders develop safer workplaces. But believing in safety and passing laws doesn't always work until workers buy in. For example, a law passed on January January 1, 1968, required all vehicles except buses to be fitted with seat belts in all designated seating positions. But too many people refused to believe in seat belts, and crash deaths continued to rise for five full years after seat belt laws were passed. Finally, death rates from crashes dropped, and one of the things most responsible for this was found to be ongoing, aggressive training and education. We have also discovered that one of the most notable reasons for the decline of workplace deaths and injuries has been the rise in safety meetings and safety training. So the next time you get bored with safety meetings and safety training, take a minute to remind yourself that it's your health, maybe even your life, that's at stake. Pay attention. You owe it to everyone who depends on you.